Thank you for joining me today. My name is Trevor Ginther and today we're going to cover trip inspection. What we're going to talk about is the National Safety Code Standard 13 Schedule 1. So with Schedule 1 we're going to have major defects and minor defects. So here at Petro West we require guys to do pre-trips and post-trips. With the post-trips the only ones that are required to do a post-trip inspection is any vehicle that's registered over 20,000 kilograms. With pre-trips before you operate the vehicle it's any vehicle registered over 4,500 kilograms. Okay, with that pre-post trip, what we're going to look at is major and minor defects from the schedule. So there's going to be some items that will put the truck and trailer out of service, and there's going to be some items where you can continue on with your day. So with filling out a trip inspection, you got to fill out the complete document. Trip inspections are time, date, location, and mileage specific. So let's say throughout the day you change your truck or hook onto a different trailer, when you do that, you're going to have to fill out an individual trip inspection report on that unit, whether it's a truck or trailer. So a new document has to be created because, again, they're time, date, location, and mileage specific. Okay, and at the end of the day, on your post trip, you're going to have to fill out a whole new piece of uh, trip inspection document because, again, it's time, date, location specific. So what we're going to look at is we're going to look under the hood, we're going to look at brakes, fluids, suspension, we're going to look at the trailer, and we're going to look at wrappers. So we're going to start in here. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. Okay, we're here. We're going to start the trip inspection. So a key point with the trip inspection is safely setting up the truck and trailer. So what we're going to do is we're going to dynamite the brakes on the truck, dynamite the brakes on the trailer. We're going to chalk your tires, place a tranny in low gear, and remove the keys. So with the trip inspection, you got to remember it's going to take you about 20 to 30 minutes to do the inspection on the truck and finish the paperwork. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the Petro West trip inspection form. So with the form, you've got to fill out the top portion. So on the top portion is the location, the date, time of the actual inspection, mileage, hour meter reading, and truck and trailer numbers. So another thing unique with Petro West is everything that you check on a truck or trailer, you have to have a check mark by it. Anything that's a defect, you'd place an X. So another new thing we've added on this form is a wheel retorque column for both the truck and the trailer. So anytime you do a retorque in the bush or at the shop, you would check off one of these boxes, whether it's truck or trailer. Then we have wheel location, so we did a retorque, axle 2 right, so your steering axle would be axle 1, axle 2 would be your first drive axle. So in this form we have no defects, so you always want to check off this box. And then below it, this box always has to be checked off, no matter if there's defects or not. And then one more thing is you print your name and sign your name. Also you can put in your start time and your end times, just remember to put AM or PM. Okay, so we have another trip inspection here. The only difference with this one is we have a defect. Okay, so the defect on this one is we've marked it with an X. It's signal lights. Okay, so what you need to do anytime you have a defect is go down to the remarks section, fill in the remarks. So this one you have the left front signal light is not working and you as a driver decided to repair it. So you make note that it's been repaired. You don't check off this box here. Again, you always check off this box. Since you've repaired it, you need to check off this bottom box and it states above defects corrected. So the time you repaired it at, and this is at 7 a.m. So you're gonna put your name and signature. That's just letting everybody know that you repaired it and the time it was repaired. And once again, you have to fill in your printed name and sign name here. This just lets everybody know who did the inspection. Okay, so we have a third example here. With this one, we have an in route defect and the defects on the trailer. Something's wrong with the lights. So what we found is the rear middle ID light isn't working on the trailer. So we've identified it up here under in route. So in route means throughout your day. So your initial inspection was done at seven. User driver found a lighting issue on the trailer in route. So you check off the in route box. Okay, then you go down to in route defects. You have to make a note. So this one identifies that the middle ID light's out on the trailer. Okay, so now we go down here on the form 
and we look at you found that defect at 10 o'clock you put your name down here printed then you sign it and you have to declare that you certified the repairs are unnecessary for the safe operation of the vehicle and how you do that is you need to look at schedule one in the front of your trip inspection book so you need to look at that schedule and identify if this ID light is a major defect or a minor defect if it's a major defect the vehicle can't go and if it's a minor defect you can continue on so what you've done is you have looked at the front cover of the Petro West trip inspection book you've identified it's not a major defect so down here you certified it's not a major defect you can continue on with your day so a key point with that if you find any defect you have to look at the major defect category you have to determine does this defect fall into that if it does the vehicle is parked if it doesn't you can certify it down here on the form that it's safe to operate you got to put the time of the defect you got to print your name and you got to sign your name so also with, also with Petro West on the bottom of the forms we have truck repair and trailer repair so you just note the defect on the trailer repair so at the end of your shift you can hand this into the mechanic shop and they can fix the defect on your trailer okay so this is schedule one schedule one has to be carried in the vehicle at all times with Petro West on the trip inspection form schedule one will be found on the front cover so you're gonna have minor defects and major defects anything falling into the major defect category the vehicle is out of service and it has to be fixed before you go so once again this has to be in the vehicle it's on the front cover of the trip inspection form here at Petro West we require all of our drivers that drive vehicles over 4,500 kilograms to do a written trip inspection. That could be a heavy vehicle like this trailer and truck or a light vehicle like a pickup truck and utility trailer. Trip inspections are valid for 24 hours from the time they're created. Also with a trip inspection you're going to have major and minor defects and to figure out what those are it's right in the trip inspection book. It's going to be on the front cover and it's going to say schedule one. So with that schedule you're going to have major defects and if you find something on your vehicle under the major defect category, that means that vehicle is out of service till that's repaired. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit more about trip inspections. So trip inspections are time, date, location, and mileage specific. So at the time you're looking at the vehicle, that needs to be recorded time on the trip inspection document and the location. So with defects, if you find a defect on the truck or trailer after the initial inspection, that has to be written under in route defects. And that'll be found on your trip inspection sheet under the remarks section. All right, so now we're gonna check lights. So we've got a log truck configuration here. So we've got headache rack lights, so you're gonna have red to the back. You're going to have amber to the front. What's most important is you have to be able to signal in the back, left and right, and have brake lights. Uh, you can have signal lights to the front, but they have to be amber in color. Then we're going to move to the cab here. If you have rotators, you're going to check those. You might have one or two. And then your marker lights on top of the cab. If you have a light on the mirror, we're going to check that also. You're going to check that you have left and right signal. And then we're going to go up to the front. We're going to look at high-low beam. With your high beams, we're going to check in the cab to make sure you've got a high beam indicator. The key point with log haul with your uh, rack lights is that they're extended at least six inches beyond the width of your load. Especially at nighttime, that lets uh, traffic that's approaching know how wide you are. So we're just going to move on from here now. Okay, we're at the left front side of the truck. We're going to check some fluids now. we got your power steering fluid. Uh, I've already checked it. It's at the full mark. We're going to make sure all the hoses are secure, there's no leaks. Make sure there's no leaks at the uh, reservoir or at the power steering itself. We're going to check the engine oil. And the oil is full. That looks good. We're going to check the alternator here, make sure it's secure. The belts are good. All the wiring's good on the back end of the alternator. Your compressor's secured. Then your main airline coming out that's secured in there and now we're going to check just your windshield washer fluid see that's full the lids on all right so what we're going to do is go to the other side and check your coolant level 
Okay, now we're on the passenger side of the vehicle, the right-hand side. I'm going to check the uh, coolant level, which is as good. I can see it's full. Then I'm going to check the uh, air uh, intake system, make sure the rubber's good, clamps are tight. Then I'm just going to take a quick look underneath the vehicle and make sure there's no oil leaks that I can see. Okay, so now we're at the left side of the vehicle, steering axle. So again, what you're going to do on every axle group, check the tread face, sidewall, rim, lug nuts, and your hub levels, okay? Okay, so what we're going to look at in here is we're going to look at the steering components. So I've got the uh, steering column. So I've checked the upper U-joints. I've checked the lower U-joints. Okay, with the lower U-joints, you want to rock it back and forth to and take it back and forth, okay? And you want to pull it. Pull it away from itself. So give it a tug like that. Uh, I've had a lot of cases where this nut here will back off and you can rock it up and down like that. You don't notice it, but you can pull it almost off the input shaft. So always rock and give it a pull. And then what we're looking at is the, uh, the lines from the um, power steering pump going in and going out. You want to make sure all your bolts are tight and dirt or snow can be a good indicator. If something's shiny, you know it's loose, okay? So you're taking a visual of that, you're rocking this back and forth, and we're gonna look for any kind of movement within the pitman arm, output shaft, and drag link. Okay, it looks like we've got a problem here. Okay, we've got movement between the output shaft and the pitman arm. So right away, that's out of service, okay? Also, it looks like I've got a loose bolt. And then if I grab the pitman arm and pull it back and forth, I'll probably have movement there too. Okay, so that would be considered out of service. That's very dangerous. What I'm looking for is movement between the output shaft and pitman arm, and then pitman arm to the drag link, and then I follow it all the way back to the tie rod end. Okay, so with that, it's okay to have rotational movement, okay? But you don't want to have movement back and forth. So the key thing with trip inspection is you're actually grabbing things, twisting, pulling, and moving things around. Because just looking at this, if this was all full of dirt, you wouldn't know anything. Until you give things a twist, then you see right away there's a problem. So CVSA Auto Service says any movement between the output shaft and the pitman arm, that would be considered out of service right off the bat. So again, you always gotta move stuff and take a good look. If you find something like that, you gotta write in your trip inspection and that vehicle's parked until it's fixed, okay? So now what we're gonna move on to is your suspension. So this truck's got a three leaf system. We got three mains on this side. So with the CVSA out of service criteria, I'll just give you a heads up. If you have one broken main leaf, that would be considered out of service. The definition of a main leaf is any leaf that contacts the front and rear spring hangers. Okay, so for trip inspection purpose, I'm going to grab the leaves, give them a shake, make sure they're tight. If I'm stepping right in there, I'm also going to give them a kick. And then I'm going to check the U-bolts, give them a shake, and then also your shock. When I've done that, I'm just going to visually check to make sure the spring hanger bolts on the front and rear are secure and they're tight. Okay, so now what we're looking at is just the tie rod end. I'm just going to rock the uh, steering column. We're looking for any excess movement in the tie rod end. Okay, so with that, with your trip inspection, uh, you want to get hands on. Just give your tie rod end a shake, okay? You can have some rotational movement but you don't want anything up and down, okay? Um, so we're checking from the steering column, the pitman arm, drag link, steering arm down to the tie rod. You want to make sure there's no uh, excess movement and also take a look at your schedule one on the trip inspection just for major and minor defects if you find something. All right, now we're going to talk brakes for trip inspection here. So with brakes, I'm at the left front side of the truck here. We got uh, an automatic slack adjuster, with the type 24 long stroke pot. So when we're checking brakes for a trip inspection, you're just checking the air lines. You're gonna check the brake pot itself and slack adjuster. Um, this one's a 24 long stroke. Within Petro West, we want all brakes to be inch and a half or less. 
Okay, um, if you have an automatic slack adjuster that's out of adjustment, that needs to be written down on your trip inspection and reported to the shop foreman, the maintenance staff. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna check free stroke. So I've got a brake buddy here, and with free stroke, we want uh, free stroke to be three quarters of an inch or less. That's the max free stroke we want, so we're just gonna test this one here. Okay, so this one's sitting somewhere between half an inch to three quarters of an inch, uh, somewhere's in there, so you want everything under three quarters. The other thing we have on here is we've got a push rod indicator. So all your brakes on your truck and trailer should have push rod indicators, because with your trip inspection, you have to see that your brakes are within standard. Okay, um, any brake that's out of adjustment will put the truck or trailer out of service. That schedule needs to be referenced. Uh, there's going to be major defects and minor defects. So just make sure you're aware of that. Again, everything's supposed to be at no more than one and a half inches. And when your brakes are applied, you want the inside angle of your brakes between your push rod and slack adjuster around 90 degrees. That's when you get the most brake force. The other thing on a steering axle uh, and all axles, anytime that you have a uh, leaky wheel seal, if your brakes are contaminated with oil and you have continued dripping out of the bottom of your brake drum, that would be considered out of service on any axle group. Okay, now we're in the cab of the truck. Now I'm going to show you how you can check your brakes. Uh, we want to use the service brake so we can test the service side of the brakes. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a pry bar we're going to wedge it under your brake. So what we've done is we've wedged the brakes on with a pry bar. Your brakes are all released, buttons are pushed in. Uh, we have about 45 pounds of application pressure. So we're going to check the service side of your brakes. We're checking the stroke and we're checking and listening for any air leaks. So we'll get out of the vehicle, do a walk around. The tires are already chalked, we're on level surface. So we're going to check the stroke of your brakes. So here at Petro West, we want your brakes to be no more than an inch and a half in travel. Okay, we want brakes all to be adjusted correctly. Uh, the problem that you run into with brakes that are out of adjustment, you're still going to have brakes. It's still going to feel the same in the cab. But if you ever run into a panic situation, the more out of adjustment your brakes are, the longer your stopping distances are. So that can mean the difference between life and death for you or oncoming traffic. So again, if you can't do this application by wedging the brakes on, what you might have to do is the free stroke application where you're pulling every brake and you're making sure they're under three quarters of an inch in their stroke. Okay, it's, it's really important to use those brake stroke indicators so you can see with your eyes the stroke of each and every brake. Okay, now that we've finished all the under hood checks and we check the steering axle brakes, we're just gonna check the driver's side here. So we're gonna check mirrors you're going to want to check them left and right to make sure they're not cracked and they're secured to the truck. We're going to check the door here just to make sure it opens and closes correctly and stays latched. You're going to check your grab handle to make sure that's secure and your top and bottom step. The other check we're going to do is we're going to check the C-VIP deckle just to make sure it's current. Okay, so to continue on with the left side here, we're going to check the fuel tank. We're going to make sure your straps are secure. There's no dripping fuel. Any dripping fuel anywhere on the fuel system, whether it's a tank, cap, or under the hood, would be out of service under CVSA. Okay, so the cap's secure. That's good. Now we're gonna check the exhaust system. You wanna make sure the heat shield's in place so the driver doesn't get burnt, uh, get in and out of the cab, and make sure there's no charring marks that would indicate any leaks of exhaust. Okay, so the other thing we need to check on left, right side of the vehicle is you wanna have your tear and GVW weights. So your emptied weight and your loaded max weight. Okay, now we're gonna talk about uh, securement of hand tools. So hand tools have to be secured from front and back movement, side to side and up and down. Okay, so most hand tool problems on vehicles is they might be secured front and back, left and right but they're not secured from upward movement, okay? So to be in standard, we need to secure it from upward movement. So we've got a pin. We're just gonna hook that pin in. We've drilled a hole in the handle. Now this is secured from upward movement. 
If this pin was not in place, it's a $575 fine plus carrier profile points. Okay, now moving back here, we've got a, a boomer and we've got some chains. So right now, as it sits, this would be out of service. It's a $575 fine. To bring this back into service, you need to close the lid and put the clasp on. Okay, that's back in service. Now we're gonna look at tire chains. So with tire chains, the biggest problem we have out there is tire chains aren't secured from upward movement. So an easy way to do that is take a tail chain that's connected on both sides. You just hook it up. Okay, that would be in compliance. The other problem we have is people like using tarp straps as a primary means of securement. This can never be a primary means. All securement devices have to have a working load limit tag with WLL on those tags, okay? Uh, the other thing that we run into is plywood. Sometimes we use plywood to cover up our drive shaft and valves. So all this plywood has to be secured to the frame and if you're gonna do it with a, a strap, it has to have a working load limit on it. Now we'll move on back to the rest of the truck. Okay, now we're gonna check some more safety items. So you wanna make sure you got two bundles of streamers. Okay, you're gonna check your log light. You're gonna plug it in before you leave and make sure both lenses are working. Check your fire extinguisher. Make sure it's in the green, it's charged. Make sure you got warning triangles and check that you have a first aid kit. Okay, now we're just gonna quickly talk about airlines. So in your trip inspection, you're gonna check your airline. So you have your supply line and you have your service line. When you hit the foot brake in the cab, you're gonna get air pressure in this line. When you're driving down the highway, there's always air pressure here. So it's critical that you have no air leaks, especially in this line. If this line were ever to rupture, the brakes on the trailer would dynamite and you could lose control of the vehicle. So again, when you have the brakes all released, when you're checking your brakes, checking the stroke, you wanna make sure that you have no air leaks out of the glad hands or anywhere in this line. Okay, so part of the trip inspection on the drive axle group is we're gonna look at airbags. Make sure your airbags are inflated. If you have one deflated airbag, that'll put you out of service. And you're just gonna quickly check your mount bolts, upper and lower. All right, we're on the left side of the truck. We're checking the tri-drive axle group. What you're gonna check is the traction surface. Make sure you're not missing any uh, tread. You're gonna check the sidewall, make sure you don't have any deep cuts. And then you wanna check in between the duels here. You want to make sure that you have no fist sized rocks in there. Clean out all the mud you can and check the rims for cracks. And then getting down to tires, an out of service tire would be a tire that's under 50% of its inflation pressure. So let's say this tire is supposed to be inflated to 100 psi. If it's at 49 psi, that would be considered out of service. And that's regardless if it has an active leak or not. Okay, now we're going to move down to the rims. We're gonna check the rim for cracks. We're gonna check all your lug nuts. Make sure they're tight. Can't spin any washers. And we're gonna see if there's any oil leaks. So we're looking at the passenger side frame area and fifth wheel. So just some more areas to look at is your upper fifth wheel mount bolts. We've got four and four. So we got 16 holding the upper plate on. Then we're gonna look at the lower plate bolts. Make sure they're tight and secured. So with CVSA, if you have 20% or more of these bolts loose, you'd be put out of service. So you wanna make sure all those bolts are tight and present. The next thing we look at is the lower fifth wheel mount. We're gonna check the mount for cracks and we're gonna check the upper plate to make sure there's no cracks anywhere on the outside surface. And then also we're gonna get right down and make sure we have no gap between the upper and lower halves here. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're just on the driver's side. We're checking the fifth wheel release handle. We make sure that's all the way in. Next step is we're, as we're doing our walk around, we're checking the frame to make sure there's no frame cracks we can see. And the next step with that is if you can see the drive shaft, just take a visual of the drive shaft, make sure it's not twisted and the U-joints look good. All right, so now we're at the back of the tractor. We're just gonna quickly test some lights. We're gonna test the running lights, four-way flashers, left, right signals, and your brake lights.
All right, so we're gonna do the uh, trip inspection on the trailer now. So looking at the trailer, we're gonna check the CVIP decal. We're gonna make sure it's still valid. So we need to check the decal and check to make sure the paperwork is on the trailer or in the cab of the truck. We're gonna check all bunk bolts. Okay, so this style here has four on the outside and four on the inside. So we've got eight in total securing this bunk. So you can get put out of service if you have one out of eight loose. This is a major securement system for your load. So just remember that. And then we're gonna continue on to bunk stake and wrappers. All right, so now we're at uh, the front of the trailer. We're gonna talk about bunk stakes. So the front bunk stakes on a trailer and the rear bunk stakes have to have Daglo orange paint or reflective tape. And the tape has to be on the three exposed sides, the front side, the outside and the back side. So the minimum requirements is the front stakes and rear stakes on every trailer, but best practices states you should have this on all stakes on a trailer. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about working load limit tags. So if you're using synthetic rope, you're gonna to have to have a tag. The critical things for that tag is you have to have the size of the rope. You're gonna to have to have the abbreviation WLL, that's working load limit and you're going to have to have the weight associated for that. The next thing you're going to have to have is the safety factor and it must say 5 to 1 on the tag. So remember all these things, so you have to have WLL, the weight associated, the size of the rope, and the safety factor 5 to 1. So moving on, we're going to talk about bunk stakes. All bunk stakes must be secured from upward movement. This bunk stake has a pin going through so this meets the requirements. All right, so I'm just gonna check the landing gear quickly, just make sure it's secured. Gonna work my way along. I'm checking every bunk and bolster. We're gonna look at the frame, make sure there's no frame cracks all the way along. Checking our lights. Gonna work our way down. Okay, so now we're at the trailer. We're just gonna check the hubs. So this trailer's got uh, sight glass and a fill plug. You wanna make sure the fill plug is in, the sight glass isn't cracked, and we're at the full. So when you're checking the trailer, you can do all the same checks as you do on the drive axles and steering axles. You're going to check rims, lug nuts, tires, and in between the duals. We're also going to look at the airbags and suspension. Then we're going to work our way right to the back. All right, so now we're at the back of the trailer. We're just going to check lighting. So with lighting, we want to make sure we have left and right signal, brake lights, four-way flashers, uh, daytime running lights, and also we want to check our marker lights. So with a CVSA out of service guide, if we're missing left signal or right signal, you'll get put out of service and you can get a fine for that. So part of checking the back of the trailer is we're gonna check lights and we're gonna check to make sure the license plate is on the back of the trailer and it's clearly visible. All right, so now we've completed a trip inspection on the left side of the vehicle. And now you can do the right side of the vehicle. So you're gonna look at the exact same things. You're looking at frame, suspension, airbags. You're gonna look at brakes, lighting. So just duplicate what we did on the left, on the right side, and a good inspection is gonna take you 20 to 30 minutes to complete. Okay, a few more checks we're gonna do in the cab is first we're gonna check our seat belt, make sure it locks in place. We're gonna check the driver's seat, make sure that locks in place also. Other things we're gonna look for is projectiles in the cab. Any heavy loose items should be under the seat, or should be in the jockey box. The next step is we're gonna look at gauges. We're gonna look at our oil temperature. We're gonna look at our oil pressure, bolts, water temperature, primary, secondary gauges. Check our fuel level. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is just some more in-cab checks. So one of the checks we're gonna do is we're gonna to check to make sure your two-way radio works. You can send and receive, okay? We're gonna check your windshield wiper washer. We're gonna turn them on, make sure your field of vision gets cleared. You're gonna check the glass to make sure there's no cracks in your vision. We're gonna look at the mirrors, make sure both your mirrors you can see to the back of your vehicle and the sides. And then also we're gonna check your scales, just to make sure your scales are accurate and working in the cab. So some of the basic stuff we're gonna go through is a safety fitness certificate. Some people call it the NSC certificate. With the safety fitness, it has to be carried in the vehicle at all times. Um, it's going to let the officer that pulls you over uh, know what hours of service legislation to apply. So we're here at Cut Bank, 
So Cutbank is part of PetroWest Corporation. Um, the operating status is provincial, so provincial hours of service would apply. Uh, if this is one of the federal divisions, it would say operating status federal. Okay, so this document has to be carried in the cab. And then we go to the um, CVIP. So this CVIP is a truck CVIP. It's a handwritten CVIP. So the original copy has to go in the cab of the truck. Okay, the expiry date is going to be at the bottom of the sheet. It's good for a year in Alberta. Then we're going to look at a CVIP, but this CVIP is a uh, new style. It's called the E-Form and it's computer generated. It's going to have an expiry date on the bottom of the sheet and uh, original copies have to be in the trailer. Then we're going to look at registration. So on the registration you're just going to verify the license plate and you're going to verify expiry and you're going to make sure it says Petrowest Corporation. Okay. So our federal divisions are Petrowest GPLTD and our provincial divisions are Petrowest Corporation. So you just want to verify that your registration and your safety fitness that you carry says either Petrowest Corporation or Petrowest GPLTD. Uh, moving on, insurance. So the insurance, you're just going to verify it's for Petrowest Corporation, GPLTD, and the expiry date. Make sure the expiry date's current. In BC, you're going to have your registration insurance on one document and your CVIP certificates are going to look a little different, but you have to carry all this basic information in the vehicle. There's going to be more information, like permits, but that's going to be division specific. All right, so for every trip inspection, you want to test your low air warning. So you can do that when you fire up the truck and build air, or you can feather down the brakes and see what pressure comes on. It should come on at 60 PSI. There we go, we got lights that come on. So this one came on at about 65 PSI. The minimum is 60 PSI, so it's passed the test. All right, so one of the air tests we're gonna do is a truck should be able to build up from 50 PSI to 90 PSI in three minutes or less. So how you do that is you fire up the truck, you bring it up to 1200 RPM, and then you time it so it's gonna pass if it goes from 50 to 90 in three minutes or less, and it's gonna fail if it's over three minutes. So we're going to look at the primary and secondary gauges. We're going to fire up the truck and we're just going to quickly check the air buildup time. So we got your primary and you got your secondary. We've got our low air warning going on right now. That low air warning should uh, come on at a minimum at 60 PSI. The other test we're going to look at is we're going to test the service side. Basically the, the foot pedal side of your brake system. So what we're going to do is have the air pressure at cutout. So on this truck it's about 120 PSI. The brake's released, buttons are both in. You apply the foot brake, you hold it for three minutes. The first minute is what's called stabilization. The second two minutes is the actual test. And with that test, you're allowed a four PSI drop for a tractor and a two PSI drop for a, a trailer. So in combination, you can't lose any more than six PSI in that two minute span. If you do, the system fails. All right, now we're going to test the tractor protection system. How we test that system is we disconnect both glad hands. So you got your service, you have your supply. Our brakes are released on the truck and trailer. So when I break this glad hand, no air is going to come out. When I break this glad hand, you're going to have a lot of air come out. The brakes are going to dynamite on the trailer. And in the cab of the truck, what we're going to watch is that red button, your trailer button, pops out above 20 psi. If it pops out above 20 psi, it's not out of service. If it's at 20 or below, it's out of service according to CVSA. So I'm going to disconnect right now. So we got your service side disconnected. Now we're going to do supply. So the brakes have dynamited. So now what we're going to do is go to the cab. 
I'm going to hop in the cab, check the air pressure, see what the air pressure reads for when the button popped, apply the foot brake, and we shouldn't have any air coming out of your service side or your supply side. If there is any air, the system failed and you get put out of service. Okay, so I have someone in the cab just to help me out to show you this. So we got your supply side, your red, service side, blue. Okay, apply your brake. Okay, there's no air coming out of either the glad hand, so it's passed the test. Okay, so just to recap the tractor protection test, we disconnected both glad hands. We had air come out of your uh, supply side, your red side. The brakes dynamited on the trailer. The button in the cab popped out, the red button popped out above 20 PSI. Okay. Then we had someone in the cab apply the foot brake. We shouldn't have any air come out of your blue side or your red side, okay, which we didn't. So it passes that test. If air did come out, you get placed out of service. So typically what happens with the tractor protection system, if you don't cycle it, it can gum up. In the winter time, it can freeze up or you can get sand or dirt within the valve. Okay, so this is a critical test. It's an easy one to test. You can have a trailer on or off. You don't have to have a trailer to disconnect. You can just run your um, red and yellow button in the cab. Okay, so with a trip inspection, it doesn't matter what kind of trailer you're gonna inspect. You're gonna still look at the same things. You're gonna look at tires, brakes, suspension, lighting. So all that stuff is the same. The one thing I wanted to touch on here is reflective tape. So all trailers need reflective tape and the requirement is you have to have at least 50% of the side covered and you got to start from the rear, you got to have some reflective tape on the rear and you also want to have some reflective tape on the front. Okay, I just want to touch on flat decks, low boys, high boys. The biggest problem we have is rocks and debris being loose on the deck. So this little rock here, that's a $575 rock. If that's on your deck and it comes off, that can take out a windshield, that can cause an accident. So the biggest thing you need to do is you need to sweep your decks. If you're loading uh, cargo or heavy equipment, make sure they're clean as possible and sweep your decks before and after you leave. All right, thanks for joining us today. Today we covered a complete trip inspection to Schedule 1 standards. Uh, after the video, there's going to be a short test to test your retention, and hopefully you've learned something today. Take care. We'll see you later.